Chinese history is some of the most extensive and interesting out of any region. We will hopefully have tales for each one of these time periods, but a period too early for our chart, Bronze Age China, begs us our ears for one last tale. Off the heels of the Battle of Banshan, which saw the Yellow Emperor tame the Flame Emperor and unite the tribes into the Yanghuang, Shi Yo is about to test his mettle. Yang Di and Huang Di are now united under the Yanghuang tribe, and with more tribe comes more necessities. Their fighting troops alone were around 8,000 to 15,000 strong. Searching for more farming land, the Yanghuang expanded east, following the Yellow River, to the East China Sea. This east was already claimed by Shi Yo, and his tribe the Juli, translated to the Nine Lees. If you recall, they had a brief skirmish with the Yang Emperor, which sent the Shenong tribe into the Yellow Emperor's territory before the Battle of Banshan. 15,000 to 21,000 strong was their fighting force. Shi Yo and his tribes were experts at warfare and weapons crafting. Shi Yo himself was said to have a bronze head with four eyes and six arms. Legends say he had the legs of a bear and head of a bull. While this is most likely myth, historical sources credit him as fierce and brave. The expansion eastward of the Yanghuang and westward expansion of the Nine Li resulted in a 10-year battle on the fertile plains of the Yellow River, at Zhou Lu. According to the myth, Shi Yo allied himself with the giant tribe of the Kua Fu, who was said to have chased the sun. Shi Yo then called the rain and wind gods to form a fog that confuses Huang Di's troops, giving the Nine Li the advantage. They had the use of halberds and swords in addition to their magic. Wang Di countered this by creating a south-pointing chariot, so his tribe wouldn't get lost. In the end, Nuba, the drought goddess, comes down to counter the rain and wind god's powers, and to change the tide of battle. Yingling, the winged dragon deity, and faithful servant to Huang Di, ultimately kills Shi Yo and Kua Fu. The non-mythical and more historically accurate account is similar, with the fog being natural, and the Yang Huang simply using drums and blowing horns to keep the enemy at bay. Sources say, however, the Yellow Emperor did create a south-pointing chariot that aided them in the fog. As in the mythological account, Shi Yo was eventually captured and killed, minus the dragon. Shi Yo might sound like the villain, but neither Yang Di, nor the leader of the Nine Li, were seen as evil, simply because of their wars with the revered Yellow Emperor. All three are seen as founding ancestors of China, Shi Yo being seen as a war deity, and as having contributed to the founding of the Wuxia civilization, which began here, with the Yellow Emperor setting his capital at Zhou Lu, along the Yellow River. The Nine Li, having lost almost all their army, agreed to join the Wuxia, but the ones who didn't were cast out to the south, splitting into two groups, the Miao in the southwest, and the Li in the southeast. These would become two ethnic groups in China, that would grow distinctly from the Han. With the Battle of Zhou Lu settled, we leave our founders of the Chinese civilization. For the time being. Next time we meet, the battle perhaps won't go in their favor. Thanks for watching Made in History. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos.